Let's start with the concept of the flow of electricity through a wire. Now, depending on whether it's going in one direction or both directions, we have to be careful with our terminology. In the strictest sense of the word, electricity flows only when it is DC current or direct current, in which case the electrons are flowing in one direction only. What happens when it is alternating current, which means that the electricity reverses direction, the flow reverses, is that it is changing direction so rapidly that the flow is only a movement of the wave, which means that the electrons themselves don't flow, they don't have a time to flow, because as soon as they start moving in one direction, they're pulled back in the other direction. So basically, they just sit there and vibrate. And the flow of electricity in that case is merely the vibration as it travels through the wire in a similar manner to how you get other forms of vibration in nature. But let us continue with our discussion at the very basic level as to what electricity actually is and how it operates. Only certain materials have the capability to conduct electricity. And this is very dependent on their atomic structure, as I'm sure many of you may have learnt in chemistry. All atoms have their electrons arranged in different ways. And it, only where there are free electrons in the outer shells of the atomic structure of a particular material will it be able to conduct electricity. So the very favorite or best um, metals that are conductors, they have only one or two electrons in an outer shell that should have a lot more so those electrons are not closely bound to the nucleus and are free to move about from one atom to the next but even with the category of broad category of conductors some are going to conduct better than others because it's a sliding scale you don't have perfect conductors and then perfect insulators, which is the opposite of conduction. An insulator is something that does not permit electricity to flow through it at all. So examples of some of the best conductors used in electronics um, would be copper and silver and gold, which are all fairly expensive. So the reason why most of the wire that's used is copper is because it is the cheapest of the three and then you can have some silver and only the most uh, nece necessary applications for excellent conductivity would rely on gold. Now let's take a look at the insulators. As we've said already, the materials whose electrons cannot move about are from one atom to the next will make perfect insulators. And in this category, they cannot conduct electricity at all. And examples of this would be wood, paper, and plastic. And glass. Now, between uh, insulators and conductors, there is a few materials that, depending on the way they are set up, could become conductors or insulators at our choice by the way we deal with them or process them. And this category is referred to as semiconductors. And in the semiconductors, we have to create the characteristics that we specifically have. So one minute these can be conducting and the next minute they can be insulating. And this is a very useful property as we shall see in later classes. The two most uh, common materials would be silicon and germanium. 
and germanium was the first that was used and uh, the silicon was the second so most of the uh, transistors in use today would be made with silicon okay now even among the metals as we said not all of them are of equal conducting ability some will conduct more or less and we of course we have to standardize the wire that we're talking about in terms of the diameter of the material because the diameter of the wire itself is going to have a bearing on uh, the possible difficulty with which it might conduct so a thinner wire obviously can con cannot conduct as much as a larger wire but assuming um, that we have the same physical characteristics the metal formed into the same physical shape and dimensions then we can compare the metals to see which ones conduct better now what happens if we use a metal that does not conduct as readily it will resist the flow of electrons and if we increase the force with which we try to push them through then the metal is going to heat up and this is the basis of resistors or specifically manufactured electronic components that resist the flow of electricity now you might not think that this is an important property but in actual fact it's at the very basic um, fundamental level of electronics in fact resistors are the most common uh, device used in the manufacture of useful electronic devices and we are going to study these resistors in great detail tungsten is an example of a metal whose resistive properties are put to good use in the original light bulb the one that's now been phased out and replaced by leds because of the inefficiency what happens in the tungsten bulb is that we take a very fine filament of the metal and we put it inside of a vacuum we encapsulate it in a vacuum with the uh, glass bulb and we force the electrons through so that the heat builds up to the point where the metal gets hot and starts to emit light so essentially there the old conventional light bulb or torch light bulb or flashlight bulb was in fact made of a situation where we were utilizing this property of heat to actually create light it got so hot that it emitted light obviously such a method of generating light is very inefficient particularly when contrasted with something like a firefly where the ha we have a hundred percent conversion of energy into light with absolutely no heat anyway in order not to digress let us examine some materials that resist the flow of electricity and determine the relationship between the voltage which is the force the current or flow and uh, this property which we have identified as resistance uh, because since we can use this property to our advantage and since it does affect the flow versus the force with which we put in these electrons or try to pump them through we can investigate these three quantities in greater detail the force is called the voltage and the current as i said before is the flow and the resistance connects these two quantities in a famous and easy to remember relationship which is at the fundamental of all electronics and it's called ohm's law the relationship between the voltage current and resistance is a simple 
linear relationship, which, as you would know from your mathematics, represents a straight line on a graph. So the current times the resistance gives us the voltage, or you can rearrange that mathematical expression to make either the current or the resistance the subject. And uh, this shows us that when we put the quantities in place, the resistance is referred to as ohms, the current is referred to as amps, and the voltage is referred to as volts with the appropriate symbol for these unit quantities shown. And there is the mathematical expression, V equals IR. Now, simple as that might be, many students don't appreciate the power of this simple formula, and they go and get themselves into trouble when trying to deal with these electrical circuits because they simply fail to see how to apply this simple relationship to solving the problem at hand. But again, I digress. Let us continue to talk about Ohm's Law. Now, you are all familiar with a flashlight, and this is the perfect example that we like to use because everybody is familiar with it. But let me digress a couple of minutes to tell you about another example that will make it very vivid in your memory. Electricity behaves a lot like water through a hose. Now we know that if the hose is big, a lot of water, considering amps as the water, a lot of current amps is going to get through that big hose or big wire. If the hose is small, very small, then it's going to require a considerable amount of force or pressure on the water to get a significant volume of the water through that tube. So therefore, one can consider the size of the tube as the resistance. One can consider the force of the water as the voltage behind the flow of current. And one can consider the current itself, which consists of fundamental units of charge as the, the water itself. So once you get that vision in your head, you should be good to go when trying to solve some of these circuit problems. Again, I digress a little bit because if we have two resistors in parallel, the current is going to divide between them in the same way that a river may fork and just like water would take the easiest path and, and there would be a much greater flow in, uh, say, an area where there was no obstructions, the same will apply to the flow of current through these resistors. So just bear that in mind when we get to that point in our discussion. We're nearly done with this lecture for today and uh, we will continue this in another lecture so that you can have a break and go and get a snack and maybe a rest. Okay, so the flashlight consists of a bulb, a switch, and batteries, which is basically just three simple items. And if we represent it on a simple diagram, as we're going to do now, we are going to see that it fulfills Ohm's law to a T. Here is the long-awaited diagram there is the battery, that is the symbol for two batteries in series that you can see there on the left. That is the symbol for the bulb there on the right. And that is the symbol for a closed switch. An open switch that means that we just move that little lever part between the two dots upward so that there is a clear separation and current cannot flow. Okay, so now labeling those items, we have the bulb which is a resistor or a resistance. We have the batteries, two batteries in series, which means that the current has to flow through all two of them, one after the other. And then finally, we have a switch, which, as I said, is turned on. 
Now, because the switch is turned on, we can see that we have a clear electronic circuit. Notice that it forms a square, or you could draw it as a circle if you want, which is why they're called electronic circuits. The electricity, in order for it to flow, has to be able to come back to the place from which it started. And in this particular case, the battery is acting as the, 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 the device that moves the, the current, moves the electrons through the wire and through the resistance to light your bulb, and uh, that completes the circuit. There is the direction of current flow, and uh, we put on a little arrow to indicate that. Well, thanks for watching this video, and we will see you in the next video.